the studio. I'm Dennis Sheehan. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to do a, uh, a little 16 by 20 demo. Um, I'm going to work from a painting that I had done quite a while back. I'm going to paint over an old portrait that was totally unsuccessful. Uh, it wasn't that bad. I could, work, I could rework it, but I'm short on canvas today, so I'm going to use this and do a nice landscape, which is a commission to repaint one of my old paintings. So, I have my palette laid out. I start with my bigger brushes here. My nice one and a half inch Benjamin Moore hardware store. I have my pale drying oil. And I'm going to dig right in here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of that blue that's up in the sky there. You can see it there. Um, that's a prominent part of this painting, so I want to get that in there. And this has to be fairly accurate to the, to the old painting that I did years ago. So I'm just going to, all I'm doing here is Severus Blue and White. And there's another little bit down here. At the top it gets a little darker, and at the bottom it's a little lighter. So I'm gonna just kind of I'm just kind of laying it on top, I'm not overworking it in, just getting a a light, airy feel to the sky. Once I have that done, I'm gonna start working on my clouds. So I've got some darker, kind of a grayish tint to it maybe even a greenish tint. So I'm just going to grab a few tones, sienna, black, just to get a, a gray started there. And then I'm going to get my white. And I might even put a little orangey red into it. And I'm going to start indicating these clouds. These are like, this is like an undertone of the clouds. White blue, raw sienna, just to start with. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to brighten them up a little. The more I look at it, the more they're kind of more yellowy-orange, so I'm going to start throwing that kind of color in there. Keep it all feathery and fluffy, just like a real cloud. So the whole mix, the gray-blue into the orangey-yellow, that should give us just about the tone that we want. See that? Pretty, pretty close. I might lighten this up a little because the photograph, usually they get a little darker than what they really are, the painting really is. So Again, I'm just mixing these tones together. It's a very neutral, dull, cloudy day. Covering over all the undertone of the portrait. As best I can. All right, I get another brush out. I'm going to leave that for now. I'm not going to put the highlights in. But I'm going to mix up a dark now uh, for the trees and the horizon. So, before I go any further, I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to put in a little bit of a light. Oops, so put white into that. Blue. And mix up that gray cloud color again. And I'm going to put it in here where the water is. So that's... And that goes up here. A little bigger than what I really want it to be, so just so I can get a rough idea. And this, this here is the horizon line. That blue's got to come up a little there. 
So I'm going to get that brush with the blue in it and bring that up a little. Like that. Okay? And I might want to put a little more blue. Well, a little lighter blue. Up in here. And over here. There. That's a little better. Some of that blue might reflect in the bottom of the water here. So, put that in. Now let's get back to my dark, my tree mass. So we'll take some blues, ivory, a little green. Obviously I take my phthalo and my transparent oxide red here, as you can see. And I'll put a little more reds into it. So I want to get those, that dark tree mass coming across from the left side. And i got to get my horizon just about here. A little lower than halfway. So let's put that in. And then let's figure out how far across the trees come. Right about here. And they come down. Something like that. And then there's one tree that goes up. Like that. Okay. That's the basic layout. All proportions got to be correct. So let's rinse off this sky colored brush. Get the blue off of it best we can. Now I'm going to concentrate on the tone of the grass which looks like the tone that was underneath in the portrait with a little bit of variations. So let's mix this all in this light color blue, orange, and we'll just put that in. It's kind of a greeny orange. I put a little yellow a little blue, just kind of cover over that, get a, get a wet base paint. I'll put a little more of the green, so yellow, blue, as it goes out into the distance. I want to get it a little, just a tad lighter out here. Add a little more of the transparent oxide red. Let's see how this works here. Way out there in the distance. And soften that horizon line down just by going over it a couple times. I don't want it too sharp. So while I have the water developing, I'm going to start to, since I can't do the grasses unless I get this trimmed down correctly, I'm going to mix up blue. Uh, we have a little blue, we have a little uh, burnt sienna. And I put a little green in it too. So I want to, <clears throat> what I call edge, I want to edge around that, that water there and give it some three dimension. So, put this dark in, keeping it a little more greener than I had it there, and curves around. We'll get a little more green even still, but it's got to be dark enough. 
So greens, touch of red, phthalo, alizarin, and the blue, of course. Can't see. Ah, there we go. Just jiggle the brush up and down to get the grasses. And over here, this comes in like this. So we have to make it uh, all textury, like it's weeds and grasses and all that kind of stuff. And this comes over a little further over there. And in the front, again, just scuffing the brush up and down, getting textures, showing that there's all kinds of stuff growing out here in this field. Out by the swale, I call that a swale. I'm going to put a little bit more color into the sky from here. And so I get the white. I'm going to beef up that cloud up there. It's kind of an <clears throat> orange, yellowy, golden color. I would like it to be kind of a gold. <clears throat> the sun's going down over here and the light's reflecting off that uh, big cloud pattern up there. So I'll tint it with a little bit of this orange and, and yellow. I keep changing it up, mixing different colors, because I don't want it to be boring, so we keep it fresh and varied, fresh and varied. I'm getting it all <coughs> soft. Feathery, atmospheric, right into the wet underneath. So now I want to get a little <clears throat> more accurate on the tree shape here. So this comes down and this comes down like that. Just edging it over with that darker cloud color. <clears throat> comes up here and down here and off to the side. And over here, I'm going to soften the distance across the top of this. Like that. Okay, I'm going to rest my arm for a second. Ask you to hold on and we'll be right back. <coughs> So welcome back. I just did a little bit of clean up here. The brushes cleaned off the palette. Now we're going to start to do the finishing touches on this painting. And as I examine the, the original, I want to make sure all my proportions are correct. So I'm going to push this back. This horizon has to go back a little further, so that's too thick. And this tree line has to come over another about another inch. It's almost to the center in the, in the photo. So I want to get all these proportions correct before I call it a day on this one. So what I have to do, I'll take a paper towel and I'll wipe out this here. And then I'll wipe out the bottom of this distance. And we'll go back in with some color, one of the things I'm going to do is bring the tree over. So I'll take my darks. I'm also maybe going to add a little more color to that tree mass. Because in the, in the other painting it's pretty dark and black. 
So I want to give it a little more life. So I'm going to put some reds in it. Give it a little more of a reddish tonality. So let's move this over about an inch. Bring the sky back down around that shape. So it goes up and down. And again, a little more of the red. Put a little red and orange together. Give it an autumn-y kind of feel. You probably can't see it that clearly back there, but I can here. And let's get the shape of this correct, like that. And then we have that tree limb, branch, trunk. Actually, if I look close, there's a couple of them here, so let's draw that in there. Some wispy ones, like that. That's a little more accurate. <clears throat> then I'm going to take a pro stroke. I'm going to re-examine the edges on that little creek. So I'm going to get my color back dark. It's not as black as the tree lines on the, uh, the banks of that. So I'm going to put again red, <clears throat> red, orange, and a little blue to dull it down. I'm going to try and get this a little more correct. And just a little sharper, or a little darker, I guess, contrast-wise. And as it goes out, comes in over there. I'm going to put the reds again, yellow it, yellow it up, blue. Same brush, and I'm going to play around with the shape of that creek. And it goes straight across, folks, so it goes right out to there. Not too sharp. Don't forget there's grass out there, there's brush. There's all kinds of stuff. Grass is in the bottom here. Actually, mine, mine's a little larger still, and the original's much lower, but I, I like it like this. I can leave it like this. I'm the artist. If I want to make a few changes, maybe, for the better. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a brighter tone and smash this painting with some light. So we're going to have some light hitting that cloud up there. And don't forget, the brightest color you can have to make a color bright, what do you have to do to it? Nothing. That's how it's bright. You don't do anything to it. It's right out of the tube. So be careful of trying to put white in to make things brighter. Because that only makes things duller. Right? Everyone knows that. It's like Geico. Everyone knows that. So a little bit of, um, I'm going to put the blue and a little of that alizarin together for a touch of violet in the sky. So some of the cloud pat patterns have a little shadowed edge to them, especially down in here. So I'm trying to mix up that shadowy tone. And it goes right into the... Uh, Right into that cloud uh, tree, sorry. So I'm just going to randomly put put the violet, <clears throat> which also outlines some of the sky poking through, the blue of the sky poking through. And it's all wet and moist, so you want to keep that effect for sure. Anytime I see another splotch of color up in the sky that's missing in my painting, I just try to feather it in there lightly.
kind of get the exact same look as the, and feel as the original the painting had. So yellowy green with a little orange into it should do the trick up here. I don't want to obliterate the blue sky, so I'm just trying to feather around things. So I'll put a little more light into the pond. Uh, it's not really a pond, it's a swale, S-W-A-L-E, swale. Some leftover water. Well, actually it goes back and across, so maybe it isn't a swale. We'll call it a little stream. Alright, so some of the sky color has to reflect into there. So I mix up basically the same grayish gold, gold tone, and then I have to dull it a hair. So I put the blue into it, and it goes in here. And that's not quite right, so I have to lighten that up a bit. And put it in, uh, keep it a little bit yellow. Like that. Get this correct as it goes into the... into the weeds. It's probably going to be a little grayer as it goes back, not as bright. I don't want to compete with the foreground water. So I'm going to dull this down a little, shadow it around the grasses, let it swing across even a little more blue into it to gray it down. Give it the effect of a meandering little stream. in the distance, like I said, can be all roughed up. This is going to come down a little further over here and across here. Another brush. I'm going to go back and get some grasses livened up here with some textures. So white, yellow, green. It's going to be kind of a dullish green, grassy. Yellowish green and grasses. Kind of like that. doesn't have too much shadow under there, so I'm going to cut that back a little. Soften it like that. Maybe that same color. Now let's get this brush here. Alright, with the Pro Stroke, I'm going to go back into here and indicate these grasses once more. This comes down. As it comes into the water, it just dissolves, feathers out. I want to get the prominent darks. Prominent darks and prominent greens. And feathered grasses against the evening pond. And this is going to be toned down a bit over here because that's going to kind of keep this kind of quiet over here. We'll get that blue back into it, back into play.
just tweak it a little bit. Take the brush and just emphasize the grasses again. Like that. I still want to put a little more paint on top of those trees, so I'm going to get a little more. Uh, first, I'm going to give this a little. Yeah, let me get the orange going. Reddish orange on the tops of the trees. So, orangey red with a little bit of green in it. I'm just going to use that. Coming in and out into the connecting to the sky with that dark violet I had there. These are definitely going to be atmospheric edges on these tree shapes. Even in here, there might be something growing. And then with a with the thin thin little brush, rinse it off. A little pro stroke. Nice pointy little thing. Get that dark again, and show that those trees have those uh, have have limbs coming up, trunks. So red and basically red and green right here. And if I want to put blue to violet it down, not so black, black, black. So we'll go like this. Like that. Oop. And actually, that has to be shorter, I think. Is that still too tall? Yep, let's, sh let's shut that down here, way in the distance. It's still a little undefined back there, so let's, let's get that lighter green color. Dull. Light but dull. Let's send that back a ways. And this comes up more. So that violety red and orange, I can put into this distance and show that there's some trees way out there diffused into the sky. Like that. Is that right? No, that ain't right. Let's get the dark again. How did I even have this? comes down like this. I'm having a heck of a time with this. Uh, maybe like that. Oh, I see. I see. There's more sky showing through here. I'm going to shorten that a bit. My sky tone. Just like that. We're almost done here. Uh, one more little. One more little touch back here. All right, folks, thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time in the studio. I'm Dennis Sheen. And keep up the good painting.